So how many of you know what, know what spoken word poetry is? <laughs> That's my friend. <laughs> she knows. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, I am a medical student, yes, but uh, I am also a spoken word poet. And what I do is this. I go to venues, uh, universities, colleges, and I perform my poems for them. And uh, I had the honor of getting my second book published by a press in Wisconsin, uh, Vegetarian Alcoholic Press, dear to my heart, and very, I feel like it's very true to who I am. Um, so yeah, it's called Heart the Size of a Loosening Fist. And basically, I'm going to put on a poetry show for you. <laughs> and I've never done this before, but I've seen all my favorite poets do it. So let's get this show on the road, I guess. <laughs> I often call myself a river, and I'm not sure why, but my poems keep making metaphors out of it, so we're just going to go with it, see what happens. <sighs> Forgiving the River, part one, a conversation. My body is beautiful. Its curves ascend more than the rugged Alps. They fall like contradictions from a politically incorrect statement. My body is the pavement of my mind's highway, but these flyovers keep collapsing. I am trapped under the debris of esteem. My lips have kissed all kinds of royalty. Hands obedient, polished enough crowns. My loyal legs once spread wide, like the Indus draining into a delta, slow like mangroves yawning in before sea silt, only for you to push the tide right back in its place, as if to put me in mine. Was it my fault that I bleed with the moon? Was it my fault then to have bled at all? But never mind that, my body is beautiful. Have you seen how my hip homes curve like wishbones? Have you seen how its crests remind you of a siren's home? Have you seen how my ribs kiss my skin with enough love to keep it close? My body is home. My body is beautiful. It feels sweet on my tongue to lie like this. So is it real when you love yourself loud like this? Please explain to me why my body is beautiful when my legs keep wanting to kiss their inner diameters. Can you please tell me why it's okay for breakfast to cross over so easily into spit and acid, corrode the only redemption that keeps my fingers from leaving prints on the moon? No blood in the rivers this time. No one stretches the tide farther than the moon this time. No one touches the river this time. How do I love a body that sounds car alarms for heartbeats? when it feels safer singeing at your own touch than to be soothed by another, can you please tell me it's okay to feel like I need to top, stop touching myself? Because if anything else, owning myself feels like I am raping myself and yelling, I am beautiful, is a violation, a lie, abrasive in its crawl to daylight. My feet crack like HR doors in crime scene motels outlined in chalk, blood graffiti, the walls. This body can only be a body. And me, I'm learning to forgive the river, the bleeding and rugged, the expansive dust of itself. So, um, I suffer from this condition, and it's, uh, it's called derealization, or depersonalization. Um, so what happens is that my mind splits into different people, not exactly different people, but different parts. And um, I have a traumatic self, the traumatized self, and um, she's five years old, she's super pretty, has big tails, uh, nothing like me right now, no tattoos. Um, she, I, I sit with her, and I make her personify my mental illnesses. And I talk to her the way you would talk to a child, not enough patience. Um, so this poem is called Explaining My Depression to My Depression. Imagine the first ever echo in the Grand Canyon. That lonely fit in a crevice in my spine and hasn't moved since. Imagine the moon on the side of the earth where everyone is asleep. 
That quiet is a corner in my lungs where air cannot touch, where no amount of breathing is enough. I know you don't want to believe this is real. Even with my head wrecking balling into the walls, we both want to believe I am faking it. We both want to believe those keloids could have used stitches. My skin just loves to grow so much, I keep tearing it open for practice. Picture air thinning out away from the earth, into the universe where sound has never been palpable, so not once has a child violated and hushed been heard in space. So I have never screamed here, I have never said no here, and if I did, of course it wasn't loud enough. My depression is the moon unable to keep the tide at bay. It is the blue of a sunrise that cannot help itself. It will come back to this, even when the sun leaves. My depression, depression is the water table rising with no floods for proof. My depression is the blossom staying the bud until next spring, and maybe the one after that. My depression is being asked, how could you possibly be sick? You're doing so much always forgetting every morsel of skin that tore, dragging itself through the emotional attrition enough to carve the Grand Canyon twice over. We both want to believe this isn't real. There are days when being the selfish moon doesn't hurt the ocean, where the other blossoms can make spring without me, where the sun is so brilliant you can't even see the blue, but I want to be more than the quiet in my ribcage. My depression may be the core of the earth, but the sun is where I come from. I am screaming this poem, where space has not heard a single sound. This poem is making room where the atmosphere has to dissolve to make meteor showers. We both want to believe this isn't real. But there is a pulse tearing through my wrist that cannot stop screaming otherwise. My depression and I made a ruckus today. For the first time, both of us listened, held hands, grieved, touched each other's empty until we couldn't tell where or who began. Tonight, I hope we are louder than ever. And maybe even take a stroll in the winter sun, soak in the day together, get sand between our feet, and blame the water. So another part of, um, another aspect of my mental illness is something called fixation, which is sort of like a common denominator between obsessive behaviors and compulsive behaviors. So um, I wrote this poem because I got really sick of being fixated on it, so it's called fixation, very original, I know. <clears throat> fixation. And I used to say I am in awe of the universe when my body wanted to dive headfirst into its vast everythingness. I have said honesty is important to me, when I've meant I need to know what the collateral damage will be to cater to it. I say I've never found home in a place, when my body becomes an earthquake at the thought of my armor clinking. Fixation is a funny thing. I laugh it off as quirks until it transforms into the three hours it takes to calm a racing railroad of a head because nothing seems empty enough to dull the fullness of your own head. The brain cannot perceive pain. It could be eaten from the inside out, but you'd never feel the migraine as long as it stays in its substance but my brain hurts from all the thinking that will help me survive a surprise meteor shower. My brain is too heavy for my neck to carry, even though Atlas hugs Atlantis to keep it aimed high. Can I say that I'm just tired from having to deal with a house on fire that never existed, but feels so real I smell soot on my fingertips? I'm just tired of seeing the universe everywhere I see the color purple. I'm tired of looking for the ghost of hurt before it is conceived of armor dissolving at the hint of a lover's smile. I'm tired of losing so much my body cannot register it. I'm tired of not having enough migraines to prove that I am being eaten alive. Paralysis and numbness are sign enough. Exhaustion is crippling enough. Not knowing how to cry when you absolutely need to is siren enough. 
I say the sky is blue today because as a kid, I told myself I was a canvas for airplanes. I say Jumanji would be a fun game to play because I'd rather actually worry for my life than worry about having to worry about it. I say the universe is beautiful. Have you seen the stars tonight? When the ground fails to be ground enough, at the same time I fail to be enough. Do enough. Feel enough. The sky is never em empty. Highway for kites and birds alike. Maybe concrete makes home inside me someday. Maybe I can be ground enough someday. Hold night and day alike without wincing every time metal clinks. <laughs>